Hey everyone. Okay, so um, what is this? This is part three of a little um, step by step uh, web dev uh, server set rendered application. Now, if you haven't seen um, the first two, right, maybe it makes sense to start there. So, uh, up there, uh, maybe visit those first um, so you kind of know what we're up to. So, where are we in the process? Just as a little reminder. Uh, so we set up our um, system like we're currently running it as you can see like like uh, we have um, uh, not that much uh, going on we installed um, a CSS framework uh, let me actually look into my notes what did we do okay we created a new frame uh, we set up the database uh, got the credentials for the database uh, secured and, and stuck away uh, we had a glass a uh, Gaudiamus based CSS framework and um, then created uh, our first routes just to see how that's working. So what we're gonna do today, right, is to basically create a login uh, and a registration form. Now, there are basically two different ways of going about um, authorization and authentication. Um, so one would basically be that the backend maintains um, a relationship with a client via a session, um, a cookie and stuff like that, right? Um, and version number two would be a stateless um, approach uh, where a front-end would uh, basically send over a, uh, well, normally a token, right, to, to um, make uh, authenticated requests. Now, whenever we're dealing with something um, like a service that rendered solution, the former is always easier to implement um, and, and also the most logical one. So we're going to basically create a uh, session. So if you remember, let me switch this over. Uh, if you remember then when we set up our frame in, let's close all of this and go back to our frame, which we call glass. Um, yes. All right, let's minimize that one. Okay. Um, then you remember that we had a um, provider for the uh, database assigned. And um, so that's just a name we gave it. And that was the new database wrapper. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create an authentication object and we're going to use a, a session provider. Uh, by the way, if I don't want to go too much into how providers work in Neon3, um, but it ships with a couple of them. So in the folder provider, you kind of like see uh, you know, a couple of things that, that how that works. So here in MySQL would, for example, be our database wrapper. That's the one we're using. And actually, let's stay here. And in auth, uh, do you see how we have a session wrapper? So that's exactly what we're going to use. Now, what we're kind of going to do is we can more or less just copy this piece of code here uh, and uh, cancel this guy. Uh, and here, instead of DB, we're going to call this auth. Uh, the credentials, um, we actually don't really need in our case. So let's take this one out on a higher level. Uh, don't forget then you can kind of like get that in here for this to work. And here we don't need it at all, but we certainly don't want to call the function unnecessarily again. And um, yeah, so this is what's provided here. This is for dependency injection. Uh, so let's maybe do this too and say auth object uh, auth. I'm not sure if we're going to get into testing, but uh, let's just do this for now and, and just assume that if this is provided by any kind of uh, dependency injection, then we're going to go for it. Not sure why this is. Uh, right. Super important for that to not exist in our case. Okay. And now forget this. Instead, we're going to say new session wrapper. And this requires a secret. So for ease of use, what I'm going to do now is I'm honestly simply going to go wild on my keyboard for a second. It, of course, makes sense to create credentials and um, load those in. But I don't want to, you know, get, uh, get too bogged down by this for now. Now, um, oh, and this is important too. We should call this auth. Okay, so at this point, um, this should actually already work. Um, but what I want to do is I want to kind of like make life a little bit easy. Uh, did we already create a, let's look at the frames that we have here. Dashboard, okay. 
let's start with that so we have a dashboard right that uh kind of does nothing i guess yeah here's your dashboard so the first thing that i want to do with the dashboard is i want this to be a protected route meaning that if you're not logged in you should not be able to get here um and in order to kind of handle this on a very high level i'm going to also do this in the frame so what i'm going to do is um to basically create a function that i'm going to call um needs off maybe right let's do it like that and then here basically say um try uh then we say this provider off actually you know what let's even be cuter here and you know what i'm going to do i'm also going to have a publicly available uh auth oops yeah yeah you were right import class did you do that correctly yes you did okay uh so then here i can do stuff like this auth equals this provider auth and you will see in the component why I'm going to do this. It's just because it's easier to, to uh, address it like that. So now I can basically say, okay, this auth restrict. Now, this would fail now if I'm not logged in. That's hence the try catch block. And it's going to throw an exception. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this exception. And say, hey, if that's really the case that uh somebody's not logged in then i want you to redirect to do the default controller and uh exit the script i guess okay right so far so good so as you can see this is still working now so what i'm going to do in this setup i'm actually going to decide this on the controller itself whether or not it's a restricted route or not so let's go to dashboard let's open it up and then here, simply say, oh, and I don't like that kind of setup here either. Uh, we're going to do it like this. And then here, simply say, because I want to have direct access to this, and say, needs auth. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. So now, if I actually load this, uh, as you can see, I'm going to be redirected to um, the... Uh, uh, to, to the uh, demo controller which is the default controller as of now okay so far so good now let's basically get a a couple of routes set up so we want to have and let's make those dedicated routes i want to have register and a login and i don't know if you remember but we're basically just going to go into the terminal and say new n3 new component uh, let's say login. Now, if I hit enter now, right, it's going to ask me from what kind of component. So it's again, it's a route component. Uh, I, yes, I want to generate a view and yes, I use a frame, which frame do I want to use number one? So glass, and then off we go. So at this point, um, I should be able to go to login. Yep. And there we are now. What I also want to do is I want to make this the default controller. Now, if you look at the at the default PHP, what you will find is that default controllers is something that's simply defined. So you can do this manually, but you can also use the CLI and say neo3 set default controller. Right, that was this the what we used, and uh, now say login. Okay, now. In theory, now, if we go into dashboard, what we would expect is that it's going to redirect us to login. And boom, here we are. Right? So now, without being logged in, we cannot go to dashboard anymore. Now, in order to log in, we have the problem that we first need to register. Now, um, we could jump into, like, how models work, but I want to keep this as simple as, as humanly possible today. So what I'm going to do is uh, a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, GitHub uh, EN3 uh, and then simple email, uh, email password auth. Yep, there we go. 
simple user model so and this is honestly is sim uh, as, as simple as it gets this is just responsible for um uh an authentication with email and password that's all it is right so i'm going to actually install this now as a model instead of setting it up myself so let's run neon3 add component right so add and then the type and that case it's a component uh, sorry in that case it's a model see my bad uh the model is called um what is the model called Oops, my internet is down or something. Hello? Okay, what's going on here? Wow. Okay, maybe you get have issue. So it's called Neon3 user, okay? Um, so Neon3 user that makes sense so so the system will will recognize it as user and then i'm going to put in the uh because this is not a composer package so i have to actually have to tell it where this is so it's at github.com neon3 uh email password auth git right hope that's correct we'll see it in a second okay okay so it has a couple of dependencies so what does this do uh and do you see how it says don't forget to run neon3 migrate models up so let's look under the hood a little bit so what we do have if we're gonna go to migrate uh if you spell that correctly at least then you will see this little helper thing Right, so, so what does this do? This just kind of helps you with the setup of your models. So in our case, we, oops, don't have that model installed. Let's quickly see if that it worked. Uh, yeah, it worked. Not quite sure why that doesn't recognize this. Probably some kind of, okay. I broke something, then let's not even bother. Um, Okay, I'm going to kind of show you that in a different video, I guess. Um, so what you see here is the, uh, that the user model was created. It doesn't migrate. This basically, let's look at this a little bit clearer here, uh, tells us how the database structure for this should look like. And since we have set up our database, the only thing we really want to do is to say, okay, uh, migrate models up, meaning the direction of uh, what we're going to update is from the code base up to the database, right? So now we're simply going to go like this, and it's going to ask us which database, and in our case, it's the GlassDB, and we're done. Um, so do you remember how this was empty? And you can simply see that it still is. So if I now click on update here, I can see that I have two tables now, user and user teacher, whatever that's supposed to do, be for. Now, um, and that means I now have a user uh, account that I can actually work with. Now, let's look at the model itself. So as you can say, see, every Neo3 model has a couple of uh, magic functions that always kind of like work, right? So uh, get, create, update, find, delete. Now, additionally, in this model, um, we have an out that kind of like regulates um, how, what kind of properties are not exposed. That guess would be the password. That makes sense, I guess. And here's our login. And yes, and we have a register. So let's quickly see what's happening here. The register validates. That means that must be here. So email password. Yeah, it's as simple as, it's as simple as you can imagine. So the only thing we really need, and we're going to build this right now, is a registration and a login and then execute this directly so let's see so a login is something let's create a new uh neon3 new component this time register now um instead of of just hitting enter and basically getting the um questions let's answer them already right let's play the mcdonald's game and say okay t that stands for type colon 
and then I'm going to say this is going to be a route component. Then v this for view. Uh, let's say yes, and um, uh, and then frame right. Let's also answer that question directly and say frame is glass. See, not one single question asked, um, and yet in our uh, register, we now have this, right? Okay. Perfect. So our register does not need to, this is all basically working. What I kind of need at this point is actually honestly just nothing. The only thing that we kind of want to do is, and we might want to, yeah, no, I don't want to have a detour. Let's directly use glass here. Get rid of this. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I don't really want to execute this as a single thing because I want to have it uh, initiated. And what I should do actually is work with a template so this I don't have to do this on every new uh, every new component I'm creating. But uh, I don't want to get bogged down into some kind of uh, rabbit hole at the moment. So let's start this process. Okay, so our login is here. Uh, let's kind of like delete all of this stuff here. And instead, create a form. We don't need any action. I'm going to send that directly here. It's going to have a method post. And then what else do we need? Uh, we need to have a grid. Uh, let's say for uh, eight, right? So it's 12 grid system. Uh, and then we're going to say, all right, so we're going to have a label. Uh, it's going to be email, email. And then we're going to have an input uh, type email, uh, the ID email, and uh, the name email. All right, let's quickly see. Where are we going with this? Uh, nowhere. We have to go to register. Okay, yeah, that's kind of okay. I guess what we want to do is maybe uh, put this in a part, the mountain top of three, and padding three. Let's see what that's doing. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. Uh, got you. Next one. So then we say label for password. Password. And then again, and have this and say, all right, the type is password. And the ID is uh, password. And in that case, the name is also password oh come on okay so far so good and um last but not least uh let's create uh, actually let's create two of those in here uh class let's say place x n so on the x axis we're going to place that in the end and going to say button button primary uh, register yeah yeah and type submit maybe all right there we go yeah and that should do for now so so this is certainly not pretty but can live with that right so uh so far so good so now let's just take uh here's sam at email.com with one two three four five six uh and kind of like hit the register right so of course nothing's going to happen right i mean there's really nothing that could have happened so let's do this very classical and say okay um let's create a function register and what we want to do in this register function is to say, um, let's load the model user. Um, register. 
and place in our post. So since the validation takes is already taken care of, I don't really have to bother about anything. Right, so, so this either works or not. Like the only thing that I'm kind of curious is what would this return? Uh, so this validates, then sets this, okay, and then creates. Okay, so this would return the user object. Okay, so let's call it the user then, I guess. And that's more or less everything we need for now, right? So if this fails, then yeah, in theory, in theory yeah let's let's be yeah let's make this clean why not right so this could fail of course it could and then oops so not what i wanted um and then we're gonna catch uh route exception okay we're gonna catch route exception and Instead, are going to say uh, no, not new user. What are we going to say? Um, return um, error. Mm, I don't know. Something went wrong. Okay, now the way that feedback works, right, or, or how, how actually anything is rendered server side is uh, let's play with this maybe. So let's just say we're gonna have this, I'm gonna call this feedback. And feedback has error, and the error is for now empty. And then I'm gonna pass in feedback into the hook. Okay, now if that happens, now let's just say here, uh, let's place this maybe below the form. Why not? Um, now the form is the card, then maybe here. And say, okay, there's a P with a uh, text warning. And here I'm going to say error. Now, you will not see anything right now, right? But let's just assume there was an error, right? Uh, I don't know. It could be at the moment. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then reload this. So do you see how I now get the feedback directly rendered to the DOM? And that's kind of like what I want to do. Uh, now that I actually look at this, I want to have this here. I want to have definitely. I want to have this here. Right. Yeah. This is where I want to have it. Uh, and then I also probably want to say. Uh, let's try something weird. Oops. Okay, this is super ugly. Forget this. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend time on styling at this point. Um. Ah, what I could do though is this. No, terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, let's not, let's not pretend that I'm a designer. Um. Okay. So, uh, because this will not happen in our case anyway, right? So, but uh, this is how we would deal with, with error handling. And now, of course, in our case, this is not the case. Uh, but what we're going to do is to say, okay. And actually, here, let's get a user in. Uh, or, yeah. Or a message, maybe. Also empty. Uh, what we're going to say here is to say, well, if is set and then we're going to say post email right let's just do do this extremely basic here and then we say okay then feedback uh is register yeah yeah let's do it like this and say hey you know what uh there's something called feedback let's type it okay so and then we're gonna do this here uh and then this we don't need 
okay because we're going to kind of like override this so at the, if this works right then we want to say okay this feedback uh message is uh you can now log in and else we're going to not return this but say hey this feedback error equals something went wrong okay and that's all that we kind of need for now this new user is honestly just for curiosity uh we want to see what that is and here we're going to answer this feedback of course okay um so considering that we have a message now what we kind of want to do and let's actually set this to false so we can work with this better uh so here after all of this i'm going to say uh maybe with a mountain top of five and a background of white and a padding of three and a text primary um i'm going to say uh message but here i'm going to say and if message Okay, so and if is, is, is uh, that's a little uh, conditional here that we can run. So at the moment, I'm not seeing anything, but now let's to actually try it out, right? So we should be at this point now where I say, okay, so now I register, boom. And as you can see, uh, I'm now registered. Let's make sure that that all worked. So if we go to all, our database and double click on user, we should now basically see, ah, here's our sam.email.com and then the hashed password. Right, which looks a little bit more complicated than the one, two, three, four, five, six I put in. Okay, so far so good. Um, now, what we can kind of do is um, do the same thing um, for login. Uh, let's actually kind of do something weird. And here, uh, say view is. Uh, No, let's not do that. Let's let's. I mean, it's a little bit repetitive. I mean, there's so many ideas of how we could build this, but I want to keep this as simple as possible. So let's simply kind of like duplicate this, right? And say, okay, so in our login, which should be here, we're just gonna kind of like do this whole thing again, and say, okay, so what do we want? Uh, we want to have. Uh, margin top three uh, this should be card and this should have a padding of three and then we're going to create a form and I'm going to simplify this down now right so you kind of like already saw like like uh, how this is set up and at this point what I'm going to do is to say okay um, just make this or actually that's that's Let's just kind of like do this. What the hell, right? Um, yeah, email, password, and the rest should kind of work. And then let's go to our login controller and see what we need to do here. Uh, so same spiel, we're going to directly use glass, not unicore, which means we don't need to load glass. So let's get rid of that and we're going to set up uh yeah let's call it feedback again why not uh and in this case so we already know this has a message and now we don't need the message here we need we just need an error right, that's all we need really all we need okay and then say this feedback right and then let's get rid of the message here we don't need this because we're going to redirect okie dokie so far so good and same thing here we're going to say hey if somebody should have posted an email address to us let us try something 
Uh, let's try. Uh, so this load model, uh, user model. Let's do it again now. We're in a different controller. Uh, class, uh, login, post. And catch the route exception. So the reason why we have to do this, just, just for clarity, is that normally if, if you send a token somewhere, right, the route exception would normally be enough. So it's just going to throw an actual request error and says, like, no, this is 401, this is unauthenticated. But uh, since we actually want to work with sessions now, uh, we kind of want to catch this and say, no, 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 no. Um, this is going to be handled differently. Mm. We're going to decide and actually give feedback on the same page. So here we simply have to say, okay, this uh, feedback uh, error, and then, uh, oops, I don't know what happened here. Uh, I'm going to say wrong credentials. Credentials. Okay, there we go. Okay, but the success case in, is uh, actually way more interesting here. Why is that the case? Well, because if we're successful, then we're going to say, hey, let's get our auth back and say assign. Now, the return of this will be a user. Right? So we're going to, okay, so we're going to assign this to uh, the user ID. Uh, next thing is uh, scope, which in that case, uh, this is just all, right? It's a full, full access here. And then the payload, uh, let's just give it the complete user. What the hell? Okay. And yeah, and that's what we're going to do. And that's basically already it. So if we now reload the page, uh, we can see the same thing here. Oh, we've got two cards here at this point for whatever reason. Oh, because we have this already. I see we kind of doubled down on that. Uh, how about now? Okay. So let's first try to add something here so we get an error message. Yeah, wrong credentials. Uh, and now try it in, in the... Oh, we for, kind of forgot what's supposed to happen here. So if we're successful, right? What we want to do is we want to redirect uh, to to dashboard. Yeah, we want to redirect to dashboard. That's what we want to do. Um, so if I now click, oh, and this still says register, which is kind of stupid. This is now supposed to say login. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and boom. And now I'm at the dashboard. Do you remember? Like I wasn't able to go to the dashboard before and now I'm here. Yeah, so there was a lot of things at once here, um, but we looked into a couple of fields, right? So uh, we added a user model, uh, we migrated uh, to the database. Um, we had some, some uh, we created logins and views and we passed information down to the views. So there were a lot of things happening here and um, uh, I'm going to be honest, there were some kind of shortcuts that we, that we did, right? So, so some things I would have write a little bit cleaner normally, um, but it's not, um, it's not overly uh, ugly either. So, so I think we can live with that uh, for kind of like a first approach. And um, so from this moment on, you have the ability to basically create routes, um, you know, create content for those and restrict access and also like read uh, with the access, which is basically what we're going to do on the very next video. We're going to say, okay, so now what's going to happen once we're authenticated? Like, like, what can we actually do? Like, what's the actual app, right? Like, why the hell do we need a login for what? What's going to happen? And I'm looking forward to that. And until then, I hope you, um, uh, well, stick with me and uh, we can then see through the next time. You guys take care.